Hi, welcome to my studio and this is a drone I'm going to be completing today in pastels. I've decided to concentrate on dog's nose because I know lots of you um, would be pet portrait artists really struggle with this part especially of dogs so I thought I'd do a quick study myself in pastel as I said and I'm using pastel matte paper and basically I've just sketched this nose outline down onto the pastel matte paper just with graphite pencil and now I'm going to start off by you know blocking in the darks because when I've got a, cons a complicated shape and form such as this you know you've got to give yourself the best chance of being able to work out where all those um, undulations and dark recesses and highlights actually are so you don't want to start off with any detail whatsoever and I generally call this in my videos the blocking in stage. So that's all I'm doing and I would be doing exactly the same if I was using oils, if I was using acrylics. Same process, get the darks in, I'm squinting at my eyes looking at the reference. I've learned over the last year if you've got something very light, very bright, you want to keep clean and bright, get the highlight actually in place at an early stage as I've just done. Now it doesn't matter if I muddy that up a bit more. I'm going to be able So that's what I'm concentrating on. Just get in that, what I'd call a map down on there. All the refinement, all the details, all the little uh, marks are going to come at a later stage. And that's what I love about pastel pencils and pastels in general, because we can put you know, light on top of dark and dark on top of light, you can't really make a mistake. We can always keep correcting as long as the tooth of the paper will accept more pastel. Now that's why I use pastel matte paper. If you haven't seen my reviews on YouTube where I'm talking about that and I'm showing why I use that type of a sanded surface. So obviously there's other uh, makes out there that are quite similar as well. But that's one I can get quite easily in the UK. So that's the type of paper you want to use when you want details. I don't go using things like the ingress type of papers at all because for me personally I just can't get the detail on them and I tried those about 20 years ago and I gave up on pastel straight away. When I found the supplies I'm using now that's when things started working much much easier for me and now I love pastels. Now the pencils I'm using are generally Carbothello, Stabilo Carbothello. I'll also use Pit as well, but I started off with just the Carbothello pencils. And you can see every now and again, I'll even use a Caran d'Ache. But I generally only use those pencils for very bright highlights. So basically the whites and very dark darks. So sometimes if they, they do go a little bit darker than my Carbothellos, so I'll use a black. So you don't have to go buy in expensive pencils. I just got a black or white and I think it's a brown really that I use fairly frequently in that car and dash make. But the Carbothellos, very very reasonable price, really good quality. I've got no complaints with them over the one and a half years that I've been using them. So I'm just going to speed the video up so you can see more easily when it's sped up how I start this blocking in stage and get the bases down because that's the most important thing with this complicated nose shape. Getting that map down on there so I can then add the refinement on top. Once I get the very basics down as I have here, I want to blend it, I want to push it into the paper. So here's a Derwent uh, paper stump that I'm using. It's a rice paper one, so it's a little bit softer than hard paper stumps. They're very, very inexpensive. You could use your finger, but this gives me more control. Now I don't go using the um, those blending sticks that you see. They're like a a uh, brush with an eraser, shaped eraser, color shaper they called. I don't use those at all personally, I just find they remove the pastel from the paper. And what I want to actually do is blend it into it. 
pushing it into the tooth of the paper because that will allow me to build upon it and it's giving me these nice smooth soft transitions and you can see I'm using you know small circular strokes just because I want it to be nice and smooth And with that all blended in, I think I just put a suggestion of fur around the nose just so we can actually get an idea of it sitting, um, you know, in the correct environment. Otherwise, it's going to look a bit strange if I just do the, the snout itself. So I'm just going to block in a little bit of fur. If you want more detail on how I do fur and very realistic detail fur in pastel, um, I've got quite a few videos here on YouTube. I've got... Uh, DVDs over on my website and most of you know now because there's many hundreds of you now supporting me over on my Patreon channel and you again to see all the really long uh, three four five six hour plus videos on there where I go into super depth actually on everything that I do to create these pastels and oil drawings so I'm just going to continue now to block in some of this fur quite loosely done not that detailed at all because this is a study about the nose and then once I've blocked that in then I really start to concentrate on building up layers on the nose and add into the refinement all the time. Okay, so now I'm back working on the nose itself. And what I need to make sure of is that I've got a dark enough underdrawing in there. Because if I don't go dark enough at the early stages, then when I put the highlights on top, they're not going to show up much at all. So I need to get those darks in place. And as long as you're not putting a dark under something that needs to be a very bright, perhaps highlight, then you're going to easily be able to push it you know a little bit lighter or a bit darker it's really surprising how much of a forgiving medium pastels really are just like oils and I know I say how similar they are to oils but for those of you that have worked in oils and or pastels and you go over to the other you'll be very very surprised how easy it is to transition from oils to pastels and from pastels to oils when you're learning new mediums now it's important to get this dark edge in the right place because we all see that on most of our dogs. I just soften areas when I want to now with my finger. This is a pit pastel pencil. You can see that wooden shaft on it so it looks a bit different than the coloured shaft on the Carbothello. I'm not going to go through um, listing all pencils. I don't like to work like that at all. I have got some very basic tutorials on my patreon channel where I show exactly the pencil numbers what to pick up where to put it but they are few and far between because that's not the best way to learn after being a complete beginner so if you're a complete beginner you can start off with that then you need to learn how to see the colors and select them which I also show on my other videos and that's how to learn you know so you can pick colors and draw exactly what you want not to follow along in a paint by number fashion as you see with some of these um, artists especially on YouTube okay so I'm gonna carry on now you can see it's quite nice and dark at this stage 
it's going to be really great for me to build the detail on top and you can see I've I've not smoothed it out now because there's lots of texture on the nose of this breed when you're drawing it this large Okay, so just blending that very slightly with, with the tip of my little finger. Just so I wanted to be a bit smoother. Ready for these details going on top. And what I'm going to use now is um, a new pastel, is, is the name of the pastel stick and it goes very very dark. And that gives me a wider range of tones so my darks can then look very very black. Now with things like the Carbofello and the Pit Pastel black pencils, if you're only used to graphite you use one of those and you'll be surprised how, how black they go. But as you can see, the pastel sticks go even darker. And that large color range then from my highlight to my darkest darks really make my drawings look very punchy. And that's where you want uh, sometimes on subjects such as this. So now it's time to add some texture and there's lots of ways this can be done so you see i've got that base map the undertones already down on there and it's all according now how large the nose is if it's a really really big portrait you're doing such as this one you want to add details like i'm going to here if it's a much smaller nose and i'll probably do some videos showing how I tackle smaller noses. You don't want to be putting in all these details. For, for extreme details in pastel you need to work large otherwise you need to put in the suggestion of um, the actual details that I'm putting in now. So a much looser effect. You will need them on very small, you know, on much smaller pet portraits. But I deliberately picked this one to be large because I know that's where lots of you are having the, the issues when you're doing it really large like this. So you can see I'm getting the texture in first. And now that I've got the texture in I'm coming back in now with my my greys and there's great range of these greys in the Carbofello set and I'm putting in all these small details gradually building lighter and lighter and it doesn't take long to do but it does really give a very detailed effect. Now on this front section of the nose we get in a lot of bounced light coming up so perhaps the ground below is, is more of an ochre colour and the nose is slightly wet or moist so that colour is bouncing up. Now this is the type of things that differentiate a professional artist from an amateur. They don't put in these little colour 
differences and transitions. So really stare at your reference photo, really study your subject and look for all these little colour differences because that's what's going to make your work stand out from everybody else's. Okay, so now that layer is done, the next stage is to go just a bit lighter again. You can see I'm doing mostly um, small circular motions, gradually building up the tone. Lots of beginners put the light in way too fast. And then they find that they didn't have enough dark underneath or something and they've really got nowhere to go other than start it again. So. I like to really creep up on the lights, gradually adding them as I'm building those layers. Here I'm just establishing where the real bright highlights are going to go. So remember I don't want too many dark layers under there so I'm not going to be able to get it very bright. And I'm pushing quite hard on the pencil to deposit quite a lot of pastel down on there. And here I'm just building up a few layers just to add some of that suggestion of fur just so it looks um, you know okay in the context of it being on a, an animal's muzzle and I'll just float in there on the paper. Very simple fur techniques I've got but really make it look realistic. Lots more of those on my uh, other videos. Okay, so I softened all that off a little bit. It looked a bit like, too stark. So I'm gradually going to re-establish some of these lights. Then I'm going to come back in and put some of those dark, little dark creases actually on the nose to start really detailing it up. Now I've got all the colors down on there. And now most of the work is done, it's just a case now of working light to dark, dark to light, jumping between the two and really starting to increase the uh, texture on the nose surface, just by putting in some of these small marks. You can go as detailed or as, as painterly as you actually want on these.
and all that texture is in place I can come with much lighter grey really start to put these details on top because that's where the highlights are living on this they're actually shining on top of the surface of the of the nose so that makes sense of me doing that with pastels but with colored pencils if you're using them uh, just normally you'd really have to leave these highlights and reserve them all the way through the drawing which seems a bit backward to me and that's why I find pastel drawing that much easier so I'm just going to continue now to add these highlights on really start to bring this to life And when you're adding multiple layers such as this, it's really up to you then the level of detail you want to push it to, how, how long do you want to continue working on an area. This uh, nose took me the best part of an hour to keep keep on detailing it, but it's, as I said, it's good practice for my next drawing. And I like to do things like that as well. When you do these little practice pieces, it really takes away the pressure. You may have, if you're doing a commission for instance, try little things out try different colors so when you actually come to the commission or your major piece you feel much more relaxed and sure that you can really pull it off to the level that you want and any mistakes you will make on on these small test pieces So now I'm coming to the end of the drawing, really pushing up the highlights to their maximum now. Getting that big contrast range is really starting to make the nose look much more wet and shiny and really catching the highlight. I'm just going to continue now adding all these fine refinement and adjustment areas. That's really going to make uh, quite a big difference to the finished piece.
Now I'm just popping in a bit of a background uh, in grey pencil, grey uh, pastel pencil, just to um, clean up the edge and not to make it look really unfinished. By putting this on the edge, I can I can blur the edge a little bit, and that makes the subject look like it's more rounded rather than cut out from a, a piece of card and actually put on there. Because I see a lot of beginners and novices still doing that. They're not uh, slightly blending the edges on the subjects, so I decided just to put in roughly the same colour as the pastel matte paper as well. And the final things I'm going to put on is just using a bit of standard coloured pencil this time, just the finest details. I use this usually to put in things like whiskers, just those things that you can't get a pastel pencil super sharp for. Just going to put in a couple of, you see how with a pastel it's quite thick, but with a coloured pencil I can then get really fine whiskers in there. So hope you've enjoyed this. Hope this helped you. If you if you've been struggling to draw large uh, noses, dog noses in your pet portraits, and I'll see you all again real soon for some more art tips. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel that's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com. And they will be copyright free for you. So you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.